For most web devs, CSS margin is one of the first things you learn. Sadly, it's also one of the worst. I can almost never recommend using margins in CSS. Sure, this is one of Theo's big, bold assertions, but seriously, don't keep using margin until you watch this whole video because I think you're gonna be surprised about some of these problems. Let's dive right in. The first thing I wanna talk about is more around the mindset. This isn't necessarily a bug in margin, like a thing that it's doing wrong, so much as the reason why I don't think it makes sense with modern web dev mindsets. Usually nowadays when we make a web app, we're not making all the HTML top to bottom. We're actually making individual elements called components that are structured, reused, and composed throughout our applications. In that mental model, margins break down fast. As Jane put it in this tweet that has not left my brain since I first saw it, margins are kind of a side effect because margins don't affect the element you're actually rendering. They affect the things around that element, which results in much less intuitive behaviors when you have a component with a margin and then you mount that in another component. This is a really good way of putting it. This is actually a reply to Max Stoiber's article, Margins Considered Harmful, which goes in depth on this, specifically around components and the encapsulation of responsibility. You shouldn't be able to accidentally break the layout of a component you made by mounting another component inside of it. Maybe it causes the Flexbox to get too big or something, but for the actual behaviors of the other elements in that component to be broken by a subcomponent is a flaw in your mental model. I really don't think this is okay almost ever. And that's a huge, huge part of why I don't use margins. There are a lot of bugs and we're going to go all into those. But before we get there, I really want to push this mental model part. It's so much easier to reason about your applications when you're not thinking about the side effects that margins introduce. It's not common that Max and I agree this hard. We debate a lot about things like TRPC versus GraphQL, but man, he's 1000% on point here. And as the creator of styled components, I think he knows what he's talking about. Let's get into some of those weird behaviors. A behavior I found myself running into a lot was when you use with 100, the behaviors of margin become much, much less intuitive. So in this example, we have a component that has margin 30 pixel set. The parent component, oh, this is padding block still. I'm stupid and I don't know what padding block is. So I'm gonna quickly change this to padding top and padding bottom. So this simple example, class container, that's the parent, and then we have two children in it, child one and child two. So max width set with 100%, so it will expand as much room as it has. Then we have the children. The first child, background red, margin 30 pixels, width 100%, height 100 pixels. This is overflowing by exactly 30 pixels because of how margin is computed by default. It is not taken from the width that you've defined, it's added on top of it. So this element is still the correct 100% size, but it's had 30 pixels of margin added outside of that. You can kind of fix this with a global selector that is very common in most CSS resets, box sizing border box, but you'll notice it's not actually affecting things here. <laughs> There's a couple other things we have to change before this will behave as it's expected to. The first one that I tend to change is just swap margin to padding. It's going to make the behavior here a little unintuitive because the padding is the layer before the, the border. So the background color is being included now. The solution here is to make a new child within. So div class equals inner child one. And with this, what I will do is set the color on that child instead. Background, I'll make it pink so you can clearly see the difference with 100% and height 100%. It takes as much advantage of the parent as it can. And you'll see here that the outside margin, the red it handled through padding, is actually letting everything size correctly. <laughs> and if I just remove the red here and change this from padding to padding left and padding right, suddenly things are behaving how we would expect. The way child two handles this is by not setting a width but that can cause things to break in all sorts of weird ways, as I'm sure you're already familiar. With 100%, pretty necessary evil. You don't need it if things are block, but once you get into weird flexbox behaviors, having expanding widths is often very, very useful. And when you combine that with margin, things can get pretty unintuitive. So I highly recommend for cases like this, you wrap one additional element and use padding because that will allow things to behave in almost all cases. But we have many more problems to dive into, don't you worry. Let's take a look at margin collapse. This is an article by Josh Comio, fantastic. CSS wizard. He has a bunch of courses and materials to help you level up your style solutions, your React component creation game, and so much more. We're here to talk about his article on CSS margin collapse. In CSS, adjacent margins can sometimes overlap. This is known as margin collapse and has a reputation for being quite dastardly. Here's a typical example involving two sibling paragraphs. So these have margin top and margin bottom both set to 24 pixels. And you can see here when you hover over that the margin for these two elements is actually overlapping, which is... <laughs> Do you have any idea how miserable this is to debug? It's so annoying. And as he said here, it's not reliable. You'll often be confused why things are or aren't collapsing. If you have a border or a padding, it blocks it. That's very unintuitive. I mean, I guess that's with a wrapper, so that kind of makes sense. Fun, stupid behavior of margin collapse number one. It only works on vertical margins. So this horizontal margin does not have the same behavior. What the fuck? 
Yeah. Are you kidding? Problem two, only directly adjacent elements collapse. So let's see if something like a line break between them. Now the collapse is no longer happening. <laughs> Weird thing number three, bigger margin wins. This, I guess, kind of makes sense. It's just, God, I this one's actually bugged me once in the past because I didn't know where the margin bottom was coming from on a different component and things were sizing in such strange ways. This one's silly, but it definitely will annoy you at some point. God, here's where things get fun. Nesting doesn't necessarily prevent collapse. Yeah. So we nest this paragraph in a div. Both of these have margin and you would think that parent element would keep it from collapsing. Nope, it still collapses. It just shortens the div on the inside. So even though there's an element with a margin and then another element wrapping it, the wrapper element is not sized internally to match that margin by default. Ah, <laughs> unless you set a padding or a border on that parent element and now it doesn't collapse. What? <laughs> What? I almost want to make this a quiz where I like list all of these problems and you guess what it's going to do. Here's a curious one. Giving an element a fixed height can prevent certain margins from collapsing too. Oh God, I didn't know this one. That's really dumb. Margins can collapse in the same direction. How does this keep getting worse? I didn't know most of this before. Oh God. Display flow root. What the fuck is display flow root? More than two margins can collapse. Great. Of course, more than two margins can collapse. Obviously. This one's going to kill me, guys. Why does anyone think this is okay? Oh God, what, does, what do negative margins do with the collapse? I'm so scared. I am legitimately in fear. I hate this somehow more than everything else in here. Margin collapse made me uncomfortable. Margin collapse with negative numbers. My brain, I feel it struggling a lot right now. This might be the 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 most something I've looked at on stream has hurt my brain. And I hope this helps you all as much as it hurts me because we need help. We need to stop using margin. This is so bad. What happens when you have multiple positive and negative margins? Find the largest positive margin, find the largest star negative margin, technically smallest, and add those together. This is so much worse than I thought it was. God, uh, don't use margins and you can avoid a lot of this. What about the solutions? Well, there's a handful and we're gonna talk about the three that I tend to use the most. The first that I like to use, and I know I get a lot of shit for this one, but I do think it's convenient a lot of the time, padding elements. What I'm referring to would be the relationship between these two, child one and child two. Let's say that the reason we're doing padding here is we wanna have space between these two. The way I would usually do this is display flex gap, or is it flex gap to rem or whatever gap we want between them. Flex direction, column, and there we go. But I'm going to kill the margins on these because what I'm specifically trying to highlight is how I would put space between them. This is how I would traditionally solve this problem with flex and gap. Display flex, flex direction column, gap to rem. But if I had four of these divs and I wanted to have a different amount of space between some of them, like let's say I wanted more space between these two instances of child two. Instead of having a gap, I'd have div class equals spacer. I would define this spacer padding. I'll do a one rem. So it's just one rem each direction. Why is that what it does? Anyone want to explain this one for me? They're self-closing tags. I was pretty sure you could self-close a div. You're telling me that JSX has infected my brain to the point where I don't know that about HTML anymore? You can't self-close a div? Why do we like HTML? As I was saying about spacer components, let's say we wanted to have twice as much space between these two. When you put spacer elements between things, which these could be a BR instead of a div, I just use div because I'm lazy and stupid. I can put a second one, now there's twice as much space. I could put a different spacer here, or honestly, what I do, because I use Tailwind, you wouldn't even need to make a custom spacer class. You could just do PX-2, and then on some of them do PX-4. It makes it so much easier to just quickly define things. It's convenient. I've been liking this a lot. A lot of people aren't fond of this pattern. You can always just wrap the element with the padding instead if you really want to. But I find that having literal elements in your DOM that are just for padding is actually really convenient. So try out this pattern if you haven't. Obviously, the second solution is just pad things. You can use padding the vast majority of the time that you're reaching for margin, and it will behave more often than not significantly better. I have found that padding 
instead of margin solves the problems that I run into the vast majority of the time. There's no collapse. A lot of these sizing and max width behaviors go away. Generally, padding behaves. And I haven't had anywhere near as many problems, especially once you set the box sizing properties for your app. Third solution is one that I feel like people are scared of and shouldn't be. And it's one I'm reaching for a lot more for the things that make sense. Flex gap. Gap is an awesome property in CSS. I almost said new property there because people treat flex gap like it's this brand new thing that hasn't existed before and that browsers don't support. Before we go any further, really want to emphasize browsers support flex gap. They support gap in general, even for grids. The support here is nuts. The only thing gap isn't going to support realistically is Internet Explorer. You are fine. You can use Gap. It's not just the latest versions of these browsers either. It's the last like five plus years for a lot of these. You're good. You can use Flex Gap. Browsers support it now. And browsers are usually very, very up to date too, because both Chrome and Firefox aggressively force you to update. And most people using an iPhone are on a late enough version of iOS that Safari has these updates too. It is a very, very small percentage of users that won't have access to these things. But mobile uses at 96%. So mobile's not even the problem. That's a really good sign. So what does a gap look like? This is a grid with a bunch of elements in it. And when you set a gap, it sets a space between the elements. And it doesn't set them outside of the elements, it just sets them between, because it's a gap. This is super, super convenient in flex boxes for something like a nav bar or a menu with elements in it that you want space between. The vast majority, I find myself looking for consistent padding. It doesn't make sense to put it in the component that's being mounted four times. It makes sense to put it on the parent element that is defining the relationship between those components. And gap really helps emphasize that thinking. The space between elements is not a concern of the elements, it's a concern of the parent. And Gap makes it so easy to define that. If you do need different gaps between things in a flex box, that's when I think the padding components make a lot of sense. Having a little padding element inside that defines exactly how much for certain parts, and you can fall back on Gap for the rest. Generally, I find Gap works for almost all of the things I need to do. But if it doesn't work for you, try out the padding components because those can be really helpful as well. I hope this was a helpful video and I hope that my CTO will stop yelling at me for using padding components and hating margin so much because the only time I've seen margin make sense is weird one-off negative things like a negative one PX to fix it, an icon. Generally though, I avoid margin and almost none of my code bases use it. And I hope this helps you understand why. If you haven't already watched my video about different CSS libraries and how they compare, I'll pin that in the corner. It's one of my favorite videos I've done and I think you can learn a lot from that too. Thank you guys as always, really appreciate it. Peace nerds.